And we welcome you. For those of you that were just watching Texas A&M defeat Coastal Carolina, Mike Morgan, Dave Perno with you here in Gainesville, Florida. The FAU Owls have just scored the first run of the game, a base hit to the opposite field by Ricky Santiago, scoring Billy Endress, who tripled earlier. And FAU, who has to win today to stay alive, gets on the board first, one nothing Owls. Well, just a terrific piece of hitting by Ricky Santiago. We haven't seen him do that this whole weekend. We've seen him pull the ball, hit the ball with a little power, but we haven't seen him take his hit the other way in a crucial situation. That was a run they needed to pick up, and Ricky Santiago did a terrific job. Both teams had to win two games to get to this point. The Gators still in the winner's side of the bracket. They can lose one and still play tomorrow. FAU would have to emerge victorious today or else the Owls make the trek back to Boca Raton. Collins who drove in five in the victory over South Florida. Four of them came on a grand slam that changed the complexion of the game. Former junior college player of the year from the Midwest made the voyage to South Florida. Yeah, he's got a he's got a good set of hands here and he knows how to use them. A couple good swings. He was running a little dry coming into the day, had a little tough regional, had some Adam balls that kind of broke out in the earlier game against South Florida. Maple Grove, Minnesota is hometown. Rolls this one to second, vacuumed up by Guthrie, and that'll retire the side. Now the Owls, a triple from Endress, a single from Santiago, plates the first run of the game. They've got a bird's eye view. FAU leading Florida by a score of one to nothing as we get ready for the top of the second. If you want a bird's eye view for all the action across the country in the NCAA baseball regionals, you can call every game on ESPN2, ESPNU, ESPN3 of the Watch ESPN app. Check out the Bases Loaded channel presently on ESPNU. Live cut-ins of every big moment of every game all the way to the College World Series only on the ESPN networks. Been a lot of fun thus far. Only gets more exciting by the day as we start eliminating one team after another. The Gators trailing for the first time in this regional. They've had an easy go of it thus far, making quick work of FAMU and USF. J.J. Schwartz, the SEC's freshman of the year, the MVP of the SEC tournament, the leading RBI man of the Southeastern Conference, and off to a great start in this regional. A little bit off the plate outside. And Sean Lapson's off to a good start for FAU. And when you get down to your fourth game in, in three days, sometimes you just don't know what you're going to get from a pitching standpoint. And Sean Lapson's very capable, and he's off to a good start. Schwartz has gotten on base eight times in his 11 plate appearances pretty good start for a freshman not bad regional. and he, he's not your average freshman that's for sure you know they seem like they got a few of those check swing bounced foul in front of home plate the count evens up two and two they don't have your average sophomores they don't have your average <laughs> anything they're all spectacular plus across the board but this guy it's scary to think how good he could be the next couple of years Breaking ball lifted high in the air to left center. Collins is there and makes the grab. This is exactly what you want Sean Lapson to do. He's yes. not he's not a guy with swing and miss stuff. He's going to pitch to contact, but you don't want walks. You want pop ups. And he's gotten some weak fly balls. He has and, and that's about as good as you can hit that ball by the location of it. And that's the key. I mean you, you, you get ahead of these hitters. And you, you give yourself the best chance to be successful, and then you finish him with that good breaking ball in a good spot. 
Peter Alonzo. Inside outs it to right and circling around making the grab is Sanger. Vasquez the seven hole hitter for the Gators the starting right fielder. Another one of that talented freshman class they've got four freshmen in the starting lineup. And they're all really really good and then you throw Fiedo in there starting pitcher freshman on the mound. <laughs> Little looping liner that'll dump down in front of the center fielder. Vasquez now six hits and nine at bats in this regional and and just inserted into the lineup and Kevin O'Sullivan said every time he puts him in that's all he does is hit and I can see why he's got a direct path to the baseball simple short stroke and that's the key and use the middle of the field it opens up a lot of holes for you young man out of Palm City Florida from freshman to freshman Mike Rivera now the designated hitter in the eight hole he's normally the starting catcher got a little banged up on Friday night and has been the DH since this guy's value is not just as a hitter he's a tremendous defensive catcher one of the few freshmen that at times will be allowed to call pitches you don't see that very often in college baseball especially from a freshman favorite player is Yadier Molina it's a good guy to model yourself after as a catcher curveball again a little flare and the second baseman Kerr will call off Collins to haul it in nice job thus far from Sean Lapson we go to the home half of the second. Owls on top, one nothing. Been a great year for the University of Florida on the diamond in baseball and in softball. The Gators softball team victorious again today in the College World Series. It took nine innings. That's extra innings in softball. Three to two, the final. Nicole DeWitt with the game-winning RBI in the ninth. Florida wins it by one run and guess who Lauren Hager chalks up another victory that's 72 in her career to go along with 70 home runs the female Babe Ruth of softball and Florida in that distinct group of programs that have a team in the baseball regional and the women's college world series plenty of SEC representation for both Puerta Dix and Chatham six seven and eight do up in the FAU lineup the Owls coming in at 42 and 18 on the season. This is their 11th regional and their second in three years. Already activity for the Gators in the bullpen. I mean they they just have so many guys yeah. you're just not going to sit around. That one clips the corner for a strike. Where to three for 11 in the regional, a homer and four runs driven in. Bobby Pointer, the left hander, getting warm. Martin vacuums and fires across for out number one. Nice job by Faedo coming back, going 3 0 to the leadoff hitter. Puerta, and then coming back, throwing two good strikes and getting a 6 3. Getting that leadoff out. Leadoff outs are huge this time of year. You take a lot of weapons off the out of the dugout from the offensive team when you get that leadoff out consistently. The DH for the Owls is Christian Dix, two for 11 in the regional. Eight home runs on the season. Outer half for a strike. Yeah, FAU has opened up the power the last couple games. It's been a huge boost for them. Four home runs in this regional. That really is not their calling card. They're all about getting on base, getting runners over and in. But four bombs 
and their three games thus far in the Gainesville Regional. And actually ties Florida for the regional lead. The Gators have three of their own. Two two got him swinging. First punch out for Fiedo. He stays down there. All his stuff is nasty. Good sliders, good change ups. A live fastball. Again, not your typical freshman. The only one I, in our league in the SEC this year. It reminds me a lot of Tanner Houck from a, a confidence mm -hmm. demeanor standpoint. From Missouri. Tanner Houck, very impressive performer all year long. Yeah, Alex. Fiedo with that stuff could be an ace for a lot of staffs, including for SEC schools. Just so happens he pitches for Florida, so he's the number three. Yeah, and all indications he's not going to move very far next year because Shore's going to be back, and so is Puck. Puck. What a dynamic trio that will be in 2016. Chatham down on the count, 1 2, and he waves goodbye. Off speed, had him off stride. He's got nasty stuff today. Change up down, and here you see the breaking ball away. Great spot. Set to go at the top of the third, it's FAU 1, the Florida Gators nothing here from McKeithen Stadium in Gainesville. I'm Mike Morgan, the man to my right, a man that knows a thing or two about regionals, both as a player and as a coach, Dave Perno. And uh, Dave, when you look at this Florida team, the number four national seed, I, I don't know if there's three teams better than Florida when you look at what they have. The pitching, we've raved about it. The defense, we've raved about that. How about the offense, though? 367 in this regional, 11 extra base hits. They went through a little bit of a slump, a collective slump in May, but they have found their hot stroke now. And that's the key. You're going to have some ups, ups and downs during the season. You just want to have your ups at the right time. And it looks like Florida's headed that direction, a strong SEC tournament. They picked it up and kept it going in the region. They had a 10-game streak in early May where they hit in the 220s. And everybody was saying, what's going on with this offense? Well, they found the groove in the SEC tournament, won four straight games in Hoover. They earned the number four national seed, and they have picked up where they left off in Hoover here in Gainesville. Dribbler to the left side. Santiago charging and firing for out number one. Guthrie is retired, and that'll send the Gator lineup back to the top. Well, Lapson's doing everything he needs to do. He's forcing that early contact. He's working ahead. And he didn't start out that way. One of the best players, uh, Sanger, dropped a fly ball to start the game. But Sean Lapson just kept his focus, kept pouring it in there, and quietly has, has retired the guys after that. Bader, watch that. Watches that curveball drop in at 67 miles an hour. It's got a lot of depth to it. Oh, one pitch hammered to center. Center fielder had a bad read on it, and then Collins, give him credit, he adjusted. That first step can be the most crucial. He took a bad one, but then recovered quickly. Yeah, good swing, and, uh, you know, it, it, it plays. You, you see 404. The home runs we've seen, everything has been closer to down the line. Mm -hmm. When you get past the scoreboard or to that, it's great UF sign. It's, it's really tough to hit a ball out of the shot, especially when you don't have any help with the flags blowing. A little breeze. Yeah, no breeze at all here today. We've had some of that in the night games on Friday and Saturday, but with the early start today, it's just been sunny and stagnant. Buddy Reed, the two-hole hitter. Outstanding athlete. Tremendous speed. He's already made a Sports Center top 10 catch. We've seen him show off the wheels. The power. Took a ball off yep. his shins. 
Hit it out of the park last night. A young man who wanted to be a pro hockey player growing up. I think he picked the right sport. That is a fair ball off the bag, a kangaroo hop, and with Reed's speed, you know he's going to stretch it into two. And he never even hesitated. I mean, right off the bag, third base, or an easy call for the umpire there. And never hesitates, leans on this ball around the corner at first. Fourteenth two bagger of the season for Buddy Reed. That sets the table for Richie Martin. Santiago responded for FAU in the first with a two out RBI single. Let's see if Richie March Martin can answer. Slow curveball stays upstairs. FAU finished their win over South Florida about 90 minutes ago. Changed uniforms, maybe had a little snack. And right back on the diamond. Sean Lapson doesn't need to worry about Buddy Reed at second right here. He's got two outs. He needs to make quality pitches. Yeah, if it gets to the outfield with Reed's speed. Yeah, he's going to score. He's going to score if he's standing on second. Don't, don't let him just run out of there and take third base, but be committed to the pitch. He, he was very fortunate. I thought that pitch was a little away. That's why Steve Mattingly is making the big bucks back behind the plate. He felt like it caught the corner. One two pitch breaking ball lofted the left. Andres makes the grab Lapson getting it done through two and a half. It's the Owls one and the Gators nothing. Bottom third, Owls one and the Gators nothing. For more coverage of the Division I baseball tournament and interna interactive brackets, go to NCAA.com. Abraham, Kerr, and Endress, 9, 1, and 2, do up here in the home half of the third. The Owls in a must-win situation. Abraham smokes one, and Tobias spears it out of the air. Boy, that was out of protection there. That ball was smoked. Nice play by Tobias. One error all season long at the hot corner. That actually came late in the year. He had a chance to pitch a perfect game, so to speak, at the hot corner. <laughs> Which is uh, incredible for, yeah. for a third baseman in college. With metal bats and the and the bunt game. Yeah. I mean you, you you forget that one because it's so the bunt game is utilized so much in college, so much more than at the pro level. They are a couple of ten one thousandths of a point behind San Francisco in two thousand eleven for the all time fielding percentage record in college baseball. Yeah, that air today really hurts. Well, oh, they didn't give. They didn't give him one. Bader one. I thought they. I thought they let that trail. Yeah, you got to be, be a little a, friendly scoring. Well, you you got to be a little close. But if you go back and watch that play, as good as they are defensively. Yeah, you expect them to yeah, make yeah, it. Yeah, they should have cut. They should have held Andrews to a double. One two. He went around. Kerr goes down on strikes. That's the third punch out for Fiedo. 
Yeah, they, Fiedo is getting going here. I mean, he is starting to put guys away. We talked about the wipeout breaking ball for uh, Sean Lapson. I mean, you talk about a wipeout breaking ball. It's Alex Fiedo. Andrus, the two-hole hitter, I strike one on the inner half. And that's a pretty good get-me-over breaking ball as well. Fiedo out of Tampa, Florida. His father played baseball at St. Leo, a small college in the state of Florida. His cousin Lenny Fiedo played shortstop for the Twins in the early 80s. Dribbler to second, got three charges and fires. That's the kind of play we're talking about. They're not just airless. Remarkable range. One nothing FAU. We are rolling along in Gainesville. Top of the fourth, Florida nothing FAU. The number two seed one as we are joined by the head coach of the Florida Gators, Kevin O'Sullivan, and coach Alex Fiedo. Started off a little bit bumpy in the first, and now he's been dealing of late. What's been the difference? Yeah, he's just throwing strikes, keeping the ball down, and, um, you know, he'll settle in here. Coach, Sean Lapson's doing a pretty good job keeping you guys at bay. What do you got to do offensively to get going? Well, I think we're chasing some balls out of the zone, especially up in the zone. We, I think you know, our first six outs were in the air, so we got to do a better job of getting on top of the ball and trying to hit the ball in the middle of the field. And um, and I think the slide step's kind of throwing us off a little bit. The ball's getting on us a little quicker than we think, so we got to get our loads in a little bit earlier. Coach, thank you. Sounds Thanks, good, guys. Coach. Good luck. Thank you. Tobias Schwartz and Alonzo, middle of the lineup due up for the Gators here in the road half of the fourth. Again, Florida, the road team in this game. Tobias flied out to center his first time up. Josh Tobias has been a starter on this team for the better part of four years going back to 2012. And that's a fair ball right down the left field line. Tobias easily in the second, a leadoff double. Exactly what Coach O'Sullivan called for. Hit the ball on the ground. Good things are going to happen to you. Get it out of the air. Get on top of the baseball. That's exactly what Josh Tobias does. Turns in a double. Good wheels by Tobias. And now J.J. Schwartz at the plate. 14th double of the season for Josh Tobias. Gators have been racking up extra base hits in this regional. Well, we saw him do it last night, and this is the right time for it. He drove a ball down the right field line because at worst case, we want to move Tobias over to third in this situation. So look for something as a hitter. Look for something middle away. Your, your most real estate out there between defenders is right center anyway. Try and drive that ball into that right, right center bullpen. It's interesting, the corner started in, now they're behind the bag at first and third. Curve ball strike, that's a knee buckler. Yeah, he's shown two different curve balls. That one's a little hotter, he's got a slow one, has a little more depth, and then he's got a little tighter one that he's been able to throw for a strike. Tobias now has reached 25 consecutive games. Schwartz cranks that one foul. J.J. Schwartz, we talked about the Gators softball team moving on. His sister is a member of that team. His father was a major league player. Pops Jeff Schwartz pitched in the bigs in the 1990s. When you think of all the great freshmen we saw this year in the Southeastern Conference. It was going to take a real special season to win freshman of the year. That's what this young man did. Yeah, absolutely. You, you hit the nail on the head there. And the one area that I think you're going to see the only dip in the conference next year is at, sh at the shortstop position. You're losing a lot of quality shortstops. 
0-2 from the left-hander, bounce to the right side. This will move the runner over, and Curve boots it. A run will score, and we're tied. Well, that shows you how mature Schwartz is. He was basically giving himself up, and just to make sure he moved to bias. And, uh, you know, that's well beyond his years. Look, a pitch out of the zone. Hey, I got to make sure I get Tobias over. I'm just going to hit me a ground ball to the right side. He does, and, 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 the, and the Gators get the misfortune of Kerr misplaying it. 15th error of the season on Kerr, who's ordinarily very sure-handed at second base. A couple of very uncharacteristic errors early on for FAU, and the Gators will try to make them pay with Alonzo to the dish. I think you got to credit fatigue. You know, they've been out here a long time. I mean, I I, I, I know it. Suck it up. You got to, you're playing for a regional. I, I've heard all that, but at the same time, they were out here at, since 10 o'clock this morning. Right. And I mean, it, it, you know, they played yesterday. They played the day before. They're on game two today. And there's just a, you know, you're just not as sharp. You're just not as crisp because, you know, Curve makes that play 10 out of 10 times. Certainly. And he's been flawless in the regional. FAU, for the most part, has been flawless so far. You mentioned the mental or the physical fatigue kind of leading to the mental fatigue. We should note this is the first time all day we're under shade. Yeah. I mean, it has been hot. That sun, that low Florida sun, has been beaming down on the players. And again, the Owls out for the second consecutive game. Yeah, we. I've been hot indoors today. <laughs> Just thinking about going outside, you get hot. One on, nobody out for Alonzo. Double play ball, Kerr again. The flip for one, the throw over to first, double play. Sean Lapson desperately needed that. Well, it doesn't hurt him. The air doesn't hurt him because most likely they would have held him at third and that would have scored him. So a well executed double play. Four, six, three works out. Huge spot for Sean Lapson. Vasquez checks and did not go. Ball one to the starting right fielder for the Gators. Florida has been a national seed six out of the last seven years. But again, they've lost their last four regional games. So they're not taking anything for granted today. They went 0-2 on their home field as a national seed last year, lost to the College of Charleston and to North Carolina. And here you've got a hungry FAU squad trying to make it to just its second and I know super what, regional. What everybody's saying out there, how in the world were they a national seed and playing College of Charleston right. in the first round? I agree with you. That should have never happened. They almost got punished for winning the SEC last year and being a national seed. 2-0 pitch. Chopped to first. Huerta backs up on it. And now tosses to the covering Lapson for the out. And that'll retire the side. The Gators play to run as we head to the final. The NCAA Baseball Regionals presented by Capital One. A 1-1 game as we get ready for the bottom of the fourth inning. The winner of this regional takes on the winner of the Tallahassee Regional. Florida State defeating College of Charleston 3-2. The Seminoles are already in the elimination game that we're still waiting to start. That'll be at 6.30 Eastern time. Auburn the three seed against the College of Charleston, the number two seed led by Monty Lee. And the winner of that one will take on the Seminoles. They will have to beat Florida State not once but twice in two days' time in order to advance to the Super Regionals. Last year was upset City. Nine of the 16 host teams wound up being eliminated on their home field. I don't think we're going to have that type of bizarre finish this year to the regional round. No. 
don't believe so. And it, when you talk about nine, five of the eight national seeds were eliminated in the regional round last year. Sanger puts a charge into one, but at the right fielder, Vasquez and Fiedo has now set the last eight Owls batters down. Here are the national seeds this year. Has not worked out well thus far for UCLA. LSU the two seed, Louisville the three, Florida four, Miami, Illinois, TCU, and Missouri State. Got representation all over the place this year, which is, I think, is good for the sport of college baseball. Santiago responsible for driving in the lone run of the game for FAU. Strike call, he disagreed with that one. Santiago, the captain, a senior, a workhorse for this FAU squad. Healthy cut at that one. Fiedo is just getting better inning by inning. Hey, good pitch. Tried to get him a chase. Draws a walk, so that puts an end of the streak of eight straight retired by the right-hander Fiedo. Roman Collins bounced out to second of the first. You know, in talking with uh, Coach O'Sullivan, I mean, it was he wasn't crazy about playing this. FAU team. Yeah. Uh, their, their lineup is, can do you some damage. And the way they've been swinging the bats the last couple games, well, they got going in the ninth inning yesterday against FAMU with the big inning. And then they carried it over to the day in game one. They're just a, a lot of weapons. They got left handers in there, they got right handers, they have a little bit of power. Well, they led Conference USA, and I realize Conference USA is not the caliber of the SEC but it's still a pretty solid baseball league and they led that league average runs doubles triples I mean almost every offensive category on imaginable. base percentage yeah that one wasn't even close as yeah. you pointed out they do a tremendous job getting on I mean I, I do I would love to venture I, I would think that they are about the only team in the country that when you add their hit by pitches and their walks together that the, they have more of those than they've been than they strike out right and that that's really tough to do in the air to left Bader giving chase it's going to be the shortstop instead look at the ground that Martin covered there looks like a 40 yard dash by the starting shortstop One on, two gone for Puerta. It was a heartbreaking defeat in the regional two years ago. It's a game that people still talk about, even if you're not an FAU fan, when they took on North Carolina. I remember I was watching it at a sports bar in Louisville after calling a game in that regional. FAU was down two in the ninth. They hit a grand slam to go up to. North Carolina ties it in the ninth. FAU was up two runs in the 11th, and North Carolina still wound up winning the game. It's a memory that haunts John McCormick to this day. Fly ball to right. Vasquez waits on it and puts the squeeze on it for out number three. Coming up, we'll speak to John McCormick, the head coach of the Owls, who are tied with the Gators one all. Gators coming to back, tied with the Owls at one, top of the fifth. 
as we're pleased to be joined by the head coach of FAU John McCormick and coach you have to be pleased with what you've gotten from your lefty Sean Lapson on the mound thus far what has been working for him the best well he can throw his breaking ball and his change up for strike so makes the fastball all that all that better much better and um, you know he's he's done well coach Mack you guys did a great job in the first Santiago with the two out RBI but since that point fiedo has been pretty tough against you what do you need to do there well we got to lay off that slider you can see up there he's you know he's getting us to swing at ones out of the zone um, it's a good pitch and it's hard to lay off of but we got it we got to really work on it all right coach we'll let you get good, back coach. to it thank you good thank luck. you appreciate it John McCormick seventh year as the head coach of the FAU program longtime assistant before that went to high school in Boca played at Lynn University in Boca an assistant coach at FAU in Boca now the head coach in Boca he is a Boca boy and he gets it he gets his college baseball his players have to love him great glove work there by Lapson Rivera is retired for the first out here in the fifth I mean you can just see it in the interview he's relaxed he's confident in his guys and that's just a great message when you're playing in this type of game I mean he just seems to me he's a guy I like to play for I can tell you that much and kids love him you know they won 42 games this year and I asked him I said is this the best team you've coached as the head coach in his seven years first pitch a called strike to Guthrie the ninth man of the order he said you know talent wise two years ago I think we were better had a couple of high draft picks but he says chemistry wise this is the tops they've got a motto OTF only the family it's really a family atmosphere that's what they preach that's what they sell in recruiting and you can just tell there is a, a, a unity that you don't always have believe it or not when you walk into a dugout of a college baseball team absolutely and I'm going to tell you and I'm going to tell coach Mack this I think they're going to be special next year. Yeah, I, I really do. I, I think he'll piece enough pitching together. He'll ha have some coming back, but they may lo lose one guy from this lineup. Off the plate outside to Guthrie. See some extra tape on that left wrist for Guthrie. That forced him to miss the SEC tournament championship game. It appears to be OK. One two from the left hander bounce to second Kerr gobbles it up two up two down for Lapson. And that's why winning that game against South Florida was so big to get this team in this type of game and at least taste it this year. If it doesn't work out for you this year. They know what they're shooting for next year and they know what to do when they get here. I think a lot of people when they study up on FAU would be surprised to know this program has made it to 11 regionals this is yeah. not <laughs> you know this is not some program that's completely come out of the blue they made it to the super in 2002 lost to Georgia Tech in that one and again a heartbreaking loss to North Carolina in the regional two years ago Quickly ahead on the count, no balls, two strikes to the leadoff man, Harrison Bader. 51 pitches for Lapson, pretty good pace so far. And he is throwing strikes, bottom line, that's what you want in this situation. FAU's got a pretty fresh bullpen. They haven't even used their closer yet. McGarry will run it up there in the mid to upper 90s if we see him today and I'd be shocked if we didn't one two pitch pulled down the left field line that is the third ball of its kind right down the left field line and the third double just enough keeps his hands back gets fooled a little bit but keeps that ball fair and is so many Gators come out of the box just run the bases extremely well mine's made up double all the way 
What a season for Harrison Bader. 29 extra base hits. Now here's what Lapson has done best today. Damage control. The Gators are 0 for 7 with runners on base. Remember the one run scored on the air. Reed pulls one right to Santiago. And again, Lapson with terrific damage control. We are halfway home and tied at one in Gainesville. We are rolling right along here at McKeithen Stadium in Gainesville, Florida, the bottom of the fifth, a 1-1 game between the Gators and the Owls of FAU. Florida, the SEC Tournament champions just a few days ago in Hoover, Alabama. This is what has happened to the last seven, actually the last six SEC Tournament champions. LSU went on to win it all in 2009, but you see three of the five, three of the last five that won the SEC Tournament actually lost in the regionals, Florida did have some success in 2011. They won the tourney, made it all the way to the College World Series finals. But Dave, sometimes you use so much pitching in these conference tournaments that it can hamper you a bit. I think what makes Florida a different case is depth. that they've got so much pitching depth. And the format has changed out there. If you used to, if you got thrown in the loser's bracket, you had to win twice on Saturday. They took that game so Saturday's a single elimination and you got to remember now that the first four teams don't play till Wednesday right everybody else plays Tuesday so the, a, a little bit of the format change but you're exactly right it can wear you down the heat Dick skies one the left can of corn for Bader you know the heat so the key is the teams have learned and I, and I don't think they had a particularly, matter of fact, I remember one day there this year, it was downright chilly. So I don't think it was just brutal weather like it has been in years past. And, and guys have gone in there now. You got to realize that you've got to give guys rest. You can't catch the same guy every day. And you got to make sure you don't overuse pitching. And, and so guys have wind up, tournament change. I could have gone either way with that deal depending if we didn't need to win, if our position was solidified, I was about having fun trying to play good baseball, right. but we weren't pushing anybody to the limits and, and maxing out pitching. We were keeping everybody rested and fresh. Well, I like the fact that every game matters. So when you're trying to get one of those highly coveted national seeds, if Florida goes two and Q and Hoover, they probably don't get one. So by winning it all, that ensured them of getting a high seed. Swing and a miss, strike three. Fiedo continues. Well, it would have been interesting to me if Fandy beats him in the last game. And you see this other, why now you talk about again, the wipeout breaking ball. That's just got late finishing. It's tight. You heard Coach McCormick talk about it. They got to lay off it, but it just, it's all over the strike zone for about 90% of the time on the way to the plate. Ninth man of the order, Kevin Abraham, the catcher. Yes, he did. He did. did not go around. I still like the idea of being a hot team going into the regionals. And if that means you got to use a little bit extra, maybe come to the dance with a little bit less than you might have. I, I, I still like the fact that this is a Florida team that came in winning four straight. They have annihilated their first two opponents here in this regional. So they have won six in a row. And they're playing their best baseball. They are. And and I think there's there's no doubt what the tournament does. It sharpens you up. It sharpens you up for this event. And that's and that's what you're trying to do. Well, Fiedo is sharpening up his skills. He just gets better inning by inning. We head to the sixth. Still tied up at one. Boy, he is just showing off. He is having fun out there. That breaking ball is outstanding. Pitchers duel thus far in Gainesville. 1-1 our score as we get ready for the top of the sixth. 
reminder to catch all of the best live action on the bases loaded channel on ESPN 3 or the watch ESPN app currently on ESPN U. you can catch every big moment of every game in the 16 regionals tremendous invention when you think of the great inventors of our time Thomas Edison Ben Franklin Steve Jobs name that I would throw out there and Mike Moran the uh, crack staff at ESPN coming up with that concoction it's in its third year now everywhere I go people rave about it they love it you can watch it on your phone while you're at the ballpark or if you're just at home relaxing want to see more than one particular game at a time it is addictive I will warn you about that good for coaches and former coaches too yes absolutely you keep up the up-to-date real-time action I bet I know what you did after the game last night when you went back to the hotel room besides eat and fall asleep well first of all you probably had your personal masseuse you know, <laughs> limber you up for a big day today but you turned on the bases loaded channel yes you turned on ESPNU you watched some action Meaty part of the lineup due up for the Gators. Martin, Tobias, and J.J. Schwartz. Richie Martin 0 for 2. Yeah, and you haven't seen this much from Lapson where he's behind in the count. Here we go, Richie! Martin! A rare three-ball count for the left-hander. Yeah, he's been so efficient through five innings but you, you know if, if you're coach Mack you're looking at it I mean you might not have expected this type of outing five innings one run and a five pitch walk but that's alarming there that is the first walk from Lapson and only the second time the leadoff man is aboard and we talked about it and he's done it Till this point, he's worked ahead. He established his breaking ball. He's gotten plenty of mileage. And until that point, till the walk to Richie Martin, he has made them earn what they got. And that's the only way you can handle this Florida lineup. So, so far, so good, but not a good start in the sixth. Tobias, who finished the regular season with the third highest average in the SEC. Hitting 368 at the present moment. Hit that double off the bag at third. His last time up. Both his mother and father attended the University of Florida. I'm guessing that made the recruiting a little bit easier for Coach O'Sullivan. Goes the other way for this one, a base hit. Pulling on the brakes at second is Martin. And the Gators have something cooking here in inning number six. What a great adjustment. First hack a little big, second hack right on it. Shortened it up a little bit, stays on this baseball, uses his hands, ropes it through the four hole. Just a good approach, the, the, the sound approach that you need against a lefty like Sean Lapson. And this is where if you're John McCormick who's going to come out to the mound right now. It's where you hold your breath because it's a little bit scary right now. You see the bullpen's about to start warming up. Hesitated. Did not hesitate. He's going to his guy here. No, he, like I said he got what yep. he needed. I mean five yep. innings in the in game four for for your ball club in a re regional. We'll tell you about the new hurler for the Owls when we come back. 1 1 our score. <laughs> 1 1 ball game here at McKeithen Stadium in Gainesville, Florida. Sean Lapson gave the Owls everything they could ask for, but eventually you knew the bullpen would play a huge factor. Riley Monkman is carrying a heavy workload for the Owls. This is already his third game. He typically does not last long. More of a situational guy, give you an inning here or there. 32nd game of the year, a 6-1 and one record, one save, an earned run average of 3.5, and, and a guy was swinging miss stuff, 38 punch outs in 36 innings of work. Then ground ball stuff with that low yeah. angle. He can get ground balls. He's a little more resilient than your traditional up-top guy. 
And so that's what's allowed him to have his third appearance in as many days in the regional. This is one of those key spots in the game. It could easily turn with one swing of the bat. Schwartz has unbelievable power. Still has a chance to set the rookie record for home runs by a Florida Gator. That's set by Austin Maddox. See, these are the bats that, you know, you got to make certain that you're mature in these bats. You've got to wait for a pitch up in the zone. You're thinking double home run or strikeout. You don't want, the one thing you don't want is a ground ball, third base, or a ground ball in the middle of the field. Sister Taylor, the starting first baseman on the Gators softball team that won today. Could be a great day for the Schwartz family. Swings and misses. A floater. Here we go, JJ! Monkman out of Mount Dora, Florida. Schwartz, a 17th round draft pick by the Milwaukee Brewers, but that really is misleading. One of those guys that had a high price tag, really wanted to play in college, so teams passed on him early. Nobody wants to waste a top 10 pick. And if you have a good idea that a young man's going to go to college, you're not going to take him in the first, second, third round. Yeah, you take him exactly where they took him, mm -hmm. and then maybe he has a change of heart in the summer, and you're in position that sign him Franks this one to left field a base hit Martin's going to get the green light he'll score easily Tobias flying into third and he is meat great job by Endress to get it in there yeah that's a heads up play there to get a big out the, the first out at, at third base that's Usually not going to happen to this Gator team. They're so well coached and they do such a terrific job on the bases. But a really good job by, by Schwartz getting the pitch up in the zone, getting some elevation on it to the outfield. And just a heads up play by Andres and a really good throw. First Gator lead of the game and the 17th double for J.J. Schwartz. Alonzo 0 for 2. Do it, Peter. Oh, Peter. Yep. Inside and low to the Gator first baseman. Alonzo has had better at bats than he's had to show for it in the stat column. Strike called on the outer half. I think Alonzo might have to get on the plate a little bit against Buckman. Looks a little far, looks a little away from the plate. Leaving a lot on that outside corner, but Steve Mattingly most like where he's standing. It doesn't seem like he can reach that pitch, and that pitch looks to me to be a strike. Yeah, that last one looked pretty good. Monkman wanted it for sure. Peter Alonzo at a plant high school in Tampa, Florida. Same high school as former Gator great Preston Tucker. is a different atmosphere here today as opposed to what it was last night. This crowd was rocking and rolling I, Saturday I think night. The, the weather, I mean, being in the evening, mm -hmm. it, you know, I, 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 I really think just the heat and being at the time it is 
Wow, saw that one off foul. I mean, it was nearly a capacity crowd. They were loud, end of the game. A little bit different atmosphere. Doesn't change what's at stake. Everything if you're FAU. Right, they knew they had your call at their house. Oh, is that the luxury what it was? of their air conditioning. Oh, well, that changes everything in that they case. They had you, Mike incredibly Morgan, flattered. in the living room. You're too kind, coach. Payoff pitch, foul back to the screen. I think they want to get those extra Pernos pearls of wisdom. It's coming next week. Don't <laughs> ruin it, Mike. That's coming for the Super Regional. Do Saving I get royalties that. on that? For the Super, absolutely. Okay. You're the... I might even, you might, you might have to tell me what they are. I'm available, coach. All right. Payoff. Swing and a miss, strike three. That one crawled over home plate at 72. Such a big out for Monkman. Behind in the count, 3-1, and just a little front door slider that just, Tied up Alonzo. Yeah, and this was uh, definitely a good move here by Coach Mack. The way Vasquez is swinging the bat, he's a. Let's see if you could slow him down with a left hander. John McCormick going to do a little mixing and matching the rest of the way. Gators in the lead, two to one. The new pitcher for the Owls is the 6-2 Southpaw from Sarasota, Florida, Devin Carr, another workhorse, 31 appearances on the year. 0-2, a save, a 333 earned run average. We've seen Devin Carr before, got pretty good stuff. He's going lefty on lefty. That's the good news for John McCormick and company. The bad news is Vasquez is 7 for 20 this year, hitting 350 against left-handers. Yeah, it's that simple approach he has. He's just simple. I mean, direct to direct route to the baseball, but hey, he's going to get a heavy dose of breaking balls here from Devin Carr. We've seen it, saw it yesterday. He knows how to throw it for a strike. He knows how to throw it. The one thing that I'm curious to see, and it sounds like he's done it throughout the year, but how these guys bounce back with no rest. You know, very sharp. Some guys are very sharp the first day, and then it, there's a little tail off, with, whether it's velo or, or command. And then it, it, a lot of guys, they, they're a little iffy their first day, and then they get better when they come out. So we'll, we'll have to take a look at Devin Carr because he was sharp as a tack yesterday. Vasquez one for two. Vasquez hitting in the seven hole, but as we've talked about, they are solid one through nine. First one low and away. Runner at second. Two outs. A run already in here in the top of the sixth inning. If the Gators win, they advance to the Super Regionals. If the Owls win, we play again tomorrow night. Popped him up, got the job done. Collins puts it away for out number three. FAU's getting what they want on the mound. Time for the offense to wake up. Top of the order, due up. The number one seed and the number four national seed, Florida Gators leading Florida Atlantic two to one our score for more coverage of the Division one baseball tournament and interactive brackets go to NCAA.com alongside former World Series player and coach Dave Perno I'm Mike Morgan thank you so much for stopping by on this Sunday afternoon the Gators one win away from advancing to the Super Regionals if they do so they would play the winner of the Tallahassee Regional, and they would do so right here at the friendly confines of McKeithen Stadium. Top third of the order due up, including Stephen Kerr, who's 0 for 2. Fiedo has been in control of late. This is the moment. This is the inning. This is coming on the third time through the lineup. He's not going to get him a fourth time. Couldn't check his swing there. We talked about a 
talk about a wipeout breaking ball, and this is continue to eat these FAU hitters up. Show me fastball just off the plate. What are you guessing here I'm if you're Stephen Kerr? Put a lot of money on a breaking ball yep. right here. Going to bounce it. He throws the bat out and dumps it in the right field. Great job by Stephen Kerr to protect the plate. He should have bounced it. But what do you do? I mean, that's just, you know, hands are the star of the show, and boy, that's using them. I mean, completely, he's going, the, everything's going the left field, just throw the hands at it. Didn't quite have the, the app, and there's Kevin O'Sullivan's not gonna waste any time. He's got so much bullpen that it's tough to stay with a freshman in this. I mean, you love him. He's done such a great job. I mean, you know, what are you gonna do? And I mean, that's what you would call a cheap hit. You know, a good piece of hitting by Kerr. Maybe he's just he's gonna give him a chance for in, with Endress and just talk him through it a little bit. Kevin O'Sullivan serves as his own pitching coach. That's the post he held for many years at Clemson under Jack Leggett. Now in his eighth season as the head coach of the University of Florida, already three trips to the College World Series, including a trip in 2011 to the College World Series Finals. That year they lost to the South Carolina Gamecocks in an All-SEC Final. Well, Tobias needs to creep in a little bit. I, I see Bunt here. Andrus takes one below the hollow of the knees. I guess they're figuring, you, you're always one hitter ahead. It's not the guy coming up. It's the guy in the hole. Runner goes. Hit and run, and he jerks it foul. I like it. Little unorthodox. Aggressive. And you need to do that if you think you're going to beat a good Florida team like this, especially on their field, even though you're the home team. You like to see action. I do. I I, I, I think it's the only way you, you're going to have a chance. you got to punch back against Florida. You can't sit there and think you're just going to outplay them and, and, and things are going to work out. Great eye by Andrus there, two and one. But I am a little shocked that they, we don't see a bunt attempt here with Sanger coming up. Check swing, bouncer to third. Gonna it. be a tough play for Tobias. Got him. They make it look so easy. Yeah, that was better than a bunt because he kept Tobias back by not showing it. And he had to make a lights out play. I mean, Endress can run now. That transition from fielding it to getting it in the air is as quick as you can do. Not only does a play like that very often not go your way in terms of beating the runner with the throw, but a third baseman very often will panic, throw wildly. Now you're putting two in scoring position if you do that. A lot of things can go wrong in a play like that. Absolutely. It would work better than the bunt. Sanger, the best hitter on the team, and one of the best in this regional. He's been dialed in from Friday on. Well, the one thing I don't think you'll see them do is give him a free pass here. Mm -hmm. I, I, they'll go at him. Now, they may end up walking him. Two off the plate, and if we've learned anything about Brendan Sanger, you throw it off the plate, he's not going to swing. Great Boggs, man. Yeah. He's the umpire. Yeah. <laughs> if he doesn't swing, it's a ball. Words out. I, I mean, you know, I know these umpires come from all over, but I'm just, they look at numbers, they look at stats. Mm -hmm. They're familiar with who the guys are. And after you after you see him play, just like you and I call in the games, we get familiar Sure. after we call the same team. They're the same way. I'll be honest with you, when he doesn't swing, I assume it's a ball. <laughs> I haven't seen him swing at a bad pitch yet. Two out to Sanger downstairs. Yeah, 
Now, I thought they would challenge him a little more. Well, the guy that's waiting on deck is not Jop Liver. Ricky Santiago yeah. has already driven in a run. He's got the only run, yeah. only RBI for the FAU club. He did a great piece of hitting on the breaking ball from Fiedo. That was over for strike one. Now we'll see if he really means business. Yeah. Or if he's just going to go to elect to go with Santiago. Well, you can go a lot of different ways uh, with this pitch here. But I think it, if you get it back in it, you're going to see a breaking ball at some point. And one right down Broadway. All right, I like to see. I don't think they can get with the veteran, but this is where you you give them some false shakes. You know what you're going to throw, but you catcher gives them a little false shake. You try and get in Sager's head because you could go fastball, you could go change up, you could go breaking ball, you could go a lot of different places here. Checks and fires, swing and a miss, strike three. Mark that one down. It doesn't happen often. And, and you know, you, you got to love it. I mean, you, the fall behind the hitter, 3-0, the best hitter, maybe on the field in this game, and you come back and get him, and he's a freshman. My goodness. And the thing I love about it, as soon as that the emotion started coming out of Fayuto and Richie Martin calmed him down right away, you're not done yet. Right. You're not done yet. I could see Martin attack the freshman and tell him, hey, you got to finish this inning. Tying run in scoring position now with two outs. Ricky Santiago. Now we saw a similar situation in the first inning, and Santiago responded. A bullet to short. Martin is there. Crisis avoided. Fiedo. Working well with a little traffic on the diamond. Through six, it's the Gators two, and the Owls one. The NCAA Baseball Regionals presented by Capital One. A two to one lead for the Florida Gators as we enter the top of the seventh, the regional here in Gainesville coming down to the wire. If the Gators win it, it's over. They can punch their ticket to a super and stay right here at the friendly confines. If they lose, we play another one tomorrow night, same two teams. The winner of this regional will take on the winner of the Tallahassee Regional. Same scenario, Florida State is in the driver's seat there. Eventually, Auburn and Charleston will get underway. The winner of that game will play Florida State. They'll have to beat the Seminoles not once, but twice. Mike Morgan alongside three-time College World Series coach Dave Perno. We've been waiting to see this young man for a while. He is there. Flame throwing right hander Seth McGarry, their stopper. He's fresh and ready to go in a key spot with FAU season on the line. Yeah, and, and he's got to hold it right here. I mean, it, it, it was very clear. It was great job by Coach Mack handling the pitch in the way he did to get him to this moment. And they got their front guy, and he is extremely fresh. You would not expect this guy to be fresh, as mm -hmm. fresh as he is in your fourth game of this right. regional. That is a rarity to be able to go this far without using your closer. Rivera will start things off. Eight, nine, and one due up for the Gators. And you see right there the difference in velocity, 94. Spikes the first one. We'll see how long it takes him to find a groove. You know, I, and that's what I would wonder. That's what question I would ask is, is have you gone all season with him not pitching until Sunday ever? I mean, I would I wonder if it wouldn't have done him some good to get an inning yeah. either Friday or Saturday. He hasn't pitched since May the 22nd. That was against Southern Miss. He worked an inning and a third. Only once this season has he gone seven days without a performance. Chop to the left side. Chatham. Smooth fielding shortstop. 
guides it over for out number one. Dalton Guthrie, one of four freshmen in the starting lineup for the Gators. He's hit it on the ground twice with no success. That's a quick arm. Looking ahead to the bottom of the seventh. Collins, Puerta, and Dix, five, six, and seven. It's only a one-run game, but you don't want to wait much longer if you're FAU. No. I mean, it's only, it's getting, it, it, they've got so many guys sitting down there. They can play matchup one at a time from here on out, Florida. Two one pitch to Guthrie. Hit through the hole and in the left field for a base hit. Seven hits on the day for Florida. Now back to the top of the order for the fourth time. It'll be Bader. Bader one hit and three trips to the plate, a double. Well, they're trying, Florida will try and get a breaking ball count and see if they can't get Guthrie started, or they'll have them judging off the first couple breaking balls that were in the dirt. They'll have Guthrie looking for a short breaking ball where he can bounce and move up to second base. Strike call. There's a good one right there. Bader out of Bronxville, New York. Guthrie, 6 of 12 on the season in stolen bases. Always got to be afraid with the long ball with this guy at the plate. Second on the team in homers with 14 of them. And he was trying to park that one into the left field bleachers and then some. The Gators this year have hit 55 home runs. Last year, the entire season, they had 26. Now, some of that's the baseball, but some of it is they're just a better club. A lot of it's Schwartz. Yes. <laughs> I mean, he's got 14 of them. Home runs up 42% in the regular season. They've been up big time in the postseason as well even with the great pitching that you have in a postseason they've had some guys barreling up the baseball yeah Guthrie led off for Florida most of the year and then the wrist injury and this is where the insertion of Bader to the leadoff last weekend in the SEC tournament. Got him. Nice pitch by McGarry. That one tailing away to the right hander. Yeah, nasty. <laughs> I mean, hey, I guess McGarry had no ill effects to being out, not pitching for as long as he did, because it's jumping out of his hand. The slider's true. He's looking sharp so far. A junior from Bradenton, Florida, Seth McGarry. And now we'll battle Buddy Reed. See the increase in home runs, 21 to 37 on Friday, 17 to 33, nearly double on Saturday. And if we can 
get rid of all the rain today. I'm guessing we'll have more than 29 last year's total for Sunday. Such a better game. I mean, you've been a part of this game for a long time as a player and coach. I've been calling college baseball for over 15 years. I got to be honest with you. I didn't like 2000 through 11 through 2014 nearly as much as the other years. And I got to be honest. I didn't notice it that much in 11. Yeah. Started to notice it in 12. Chopped to first. And that will retire. We'll pick up that thought when we come back. Where to unassisted for out number three. Time to stand up and stretch the Owls trailing by a run. We have reached the bottom of the seventh inning. A good old fashioned pitchers duel. The Gators and the Owls two to one an elimination game for FAU. They've got to win today and tomorrow to advance the Super Regionals. I'm Mike Morgan. He is the coach Dave Perno and Dave very often at this point of a regional teams are a little bit thin on pitching. The scores often are higher scoring. That hasn't been the case today. Well both starters done a great job. Lapson and, and Fiedo for Florida and Lapson for uh, FAU. They just controlled the counts. They worked ahead. Defense had made some plays behind them. And it's been a, a, a well played game to this point. Fiedo finally giving way to the Gator bullpen. This is Bobby Pointer. Pointer's got four saves and four wins on the year. And Pointer, you talk about getting in rhythm. This guy can get in rhythm with the best of them. And he just starts dotting it up on both sides of the plate. Just like that. That's the outside corner with the fastball. A backward K to start things off. Collins retired. Seen it too many times. Too many times. He can go in, he can work in, he can work away. He, he's just got so many weapons. You, you've got, it's a, almost, it's a tough situation because you've got to be real aggressive as a hitter. High fly ball off the bat of Puerta, deep left field. On the warning track, Bader makes the catch. Puerta's got some pop. He's homered already in this regional and gave that one a ride. Well, Pointer was fortunate there because he left a breaking ball up and Puerta, Puerta was was sitting on it and gave it a ride. And if you had any type of breeze like we had last night blowing mm. out, we could be tied up here. Pointer out of Wellington, Florida. A senior. And a pinch hitter for the Owls. This is Lashley. FAU held in check offensively just three hits. That's saying a lot. This is a very good Owls lineup. They had two of them in the first inning. That's what this Gator pitching can do to you. Hey, let's get in the bullpen. Let's get in the ball. Well, we got to face pointer if we get there. <laughs> so it's just there's just no let up. That yeah, pointer's not enough. Then they'll bring Lewis in. He comes at you down under 94 miles an hour. One, two. Pulled foul. I think it's safe to say you and I have been around this game long enough to not be prisoners of the moment. But the more we see of this Florida team, can't find a weakness, unbelievable strengths in every key category, incredibly deep, and postseason experience. Here we go, I don't know if you can do much better than that. No, I mean, they're in line. It, it's in line, and we'll, we'll talk a little bit about the, the one thing you have to be a little concerned at. You did lose the series to Florida State mm -hmm. if they should. That was a pinch hit single for Lashley. A rare base runner over the last five innings. FAU's really been held in check. 
But yeah, Florida State cracked the code a little bit in the regular season. But I don't think Florida really hit their stride at that point. No, they haven't. And, and listen, you're you're not facing Florida State wasn't facing Pac. They right. Were facing Shore probably didn't even. They might have faced Fayetteo one time, the first time they played, and then he got moved to the weekend. But what, what you do have is, you know, you and I have talked about it. That in-state rival, it, it's just a little it's bit factor. different. It is, and, and you know, Florida State is is comfortable in uncomfortable situations, and that's you know that's a credit to Mike Martin and the job that their coaching staff does, and. And this is going to definitely be an uncomfortable situation uh, next weekend coming into Gainesville. I, I believe that Gage, the, the Florida fans will show up next weekend. Yes. When it's against Florida State. In a slightly different environment. Here's Chatham. Eighth man in the order, the starting shortstop. He's glad to see Fiedo out of the game. He was 0 for 2 with a pair of strikeouts against him. Two and zero. Oh. Yep, that, a very aggressive C.J. Chatham has done a nice job checking on a couple low pitches, and now he's got the count in his favor. Fastball up the middle. Oh, look at that play! Are you Stop kidding me? It. That's just ridiculous. He didn't even get dirty on that. Richie Martin. 360 Smooth. flip. How about this? <laughs> Range to glove side. I oh, got his knees dirty a little bit. Nice flip. Nice stretch by Guthrie. Gators about two innings away from being one step closer to Omaha. They lead it two to one in what would be an elimination game for the Owls of FAU. The Gators have done everything well in this region. I'll give FAU credit from Lapson to Monkman to McGarry. The pitching has been strong. But the Gator pitching staff and that Gator defense, which just continues to add clip after clip on the highlight reel, turns in another gem just moments ago and the man who made it will start off the inning three four five due up for the Gators Martin Tobias and JJ Schwartz inside corner for a strike Martin 0 for 2 with a walk Outside. Now you see the eight World Series appearances for the Florida Gators. Two under Joe Arnold, two under Andy Lopez, who recently retired. One under Pat McMahon in 05, and then the last three, 2010, 11, and 12, under Kevin O'Sullivan. I remember all those teams, those three years, they were good. I don't think they're as good as this one. This is as, as good as team, I believe, that Florida, I think 98, and not to go way back, but I remember that team. I just Brad got Wilkerson. to Georgia. Brad Wilkerson, Josh Fogg. Mm -hmm. I mean, they had they had a lot of dudes. Swing and a miss. High cheese from McGarry as Martin is the second strikeout victim of Seth McGarry. Yeah, Brad Wilkerson was one of the best two-way players in the history of the SEC. Fogg was a great pitcher. You're right, that was a really good team that Andy Lopez had in 98.
Josh Tobias two for three. Speaking of Andy Lopez, college baseball lost a good one. Retired at the end of this year with Arizona. Did a great job here in Gainesville. Won a national championship at Arizona. Won a national championship at Pepperdine. Pepperdine. Tremendous career. 1-0 pitch. That'll drop in the alley in right center in front of Collins. A one-out single, the third hit of the day for Tobias. Typical veteran. He does it when they need it the most. I mean, he, you know, didn't have a hit, or maybe had a hit, scraped a hit in last night. But they didn't need it. Today, they needed it. He gets three of them. That's what veterans do. That's what senior leadership provides. One on, one out for J.J. Schwartz. This guy would just scare me every time I'd have to face him as a pitcher. Yeah, he's uh, it's it's a good approach. We've seen him, you know, hit the ball to all parts of the field. We've seen power to right. We've seen power to pull side. We've seen him situational hit, move a run, give himself up to move a runner. He looks like a choir boy. He swings like an assassin. Yeah, well, then, and then you throw. He's a pretty good catcher. The boot. Mm -hmm. I mean, but I guess you got to in that family. <laughs> yes. My sister's going for back to back. Now he's. So if he stays with the plan, and I got a good feeling about these Gators. If not this year, the next couple of years, they're going to be in the hunt. Think about it, too. Kevin O'Sullivan talking to us, telling us that there's not a lot of ego. You don't have a whole lot of that prima donna that you often have when you get those blue chip recruits in. Oh, you do. Runner goes, one, two, in the air to right center, tailing towards Sanger, who makes the grab. You know how important that is as a player and a coach, the chemistry, the makeup of a team. You can be really talented in this game and not do very well. No, it, absolutely. And the longer I stayed in it, the more the character became the, the, the deciding factor. I mean, you know, you got to have substance to you. You, you, you. you know, too many recruiters now are just looking at tools and talent. If there's no substance, if there's no value that he can bring to your program from a makeup standpoint or a character standpoint to bring some some chemistry, then he, there's just not much. You know, it, it, that's something that's just not going to go very far, especially in the SEC. Alonzo's 0 for 3. Gators trying to tack on an insurance run. It's still a one run game. It, it has the feel of a dominating performance by Florida but really FAU is right there well you got to give credit to coach Mack he's used his pitching perfectly Sean Lapson did a great job they made some plays and that's all that's what you do against Florida that's the only way you beat him you just got to hang in there hang in there and hopefully something goes your way you know they what we talked about the scout report for Sean Lapson is make them earn it Runner goes, throw to second, spills out of the glove of Chatham, a stolen bag for Tobias. Oh yeah, they can do that too. <laughs> they can hit for average, they can hit for power, they can steal bases, they, as good as defensive club out there and they got pitching depth for days. Well, they've only stolen 76 bases on the year. There aren't many faster players in the country than Buddy Reed, the center fielder. We talked about it last night. He could be a guy that would lead the SEC in stolen bases next year. Yeah, I look around the league going into next year. I look around the SEC. There's some teams that are going to slip a little bit. Mm -hmm. They're going to drop back. I just don't see it from this team. No. 2-0. And breaking for third, Tobias will be there standing. 
And they might not beat you 19 nothing or 8-2. Eh? They'll beat you 5-1. Yeah. Because their pitch is not going anywhere. All starters intact due to return. And, it, you know, it doesn't always turn out that way. Aggies winning earlier today against Coastal Carolina. They're going to have to and play might... tough against Cal. Yeah. Auburn and Charleston finally underway. And St. John's taking on Arkansas. Coach Van Horn's Razorbacks starting to come on. They've got the player of the year in the SEC, Ben Intendi. Yeah, they might have to drive over here the Tallahassee region and finish here. And I've said, we sat in a, a delay like you can't believe in 2009 at the regional there. It probably took us 12 hours. Ugh. Game one all day. Ohio State against Ohio State uh, and another game. There, um, I was praying back then for the <laughs> 10 run rule. We hit like eight home runs. We scored nine in the first and we were winning by so many runs, but, but we had to hang in there until we got the okay. And it's not the rain, it was the lightning right. delays. To second. The Owls get out of it again. We head to the bottom of the eighth. It is still a one-run game. Abraham, Kerr, and Endress will try to change that when we come back. The NCAA Baseball Regionals is presented by the Capital One Venture Car. Earn unlimited double miles you can use on any airline, anytime. Beautiful day here in Gainesville. Temperatures finally dropping. A little bit of a breeze here at McKeithen Stadium. The Gators trying to breeze through this regional unscathed 2-0. A win here today would make it a perfect 3-0 and would have them advance to the Super Regionals. 2-8-0 for the Gators, 1-4-2 for the Owls. Florida Atlantic has not reached second base since the first inning triple. Hit by Billy Endress. It'll be Abraham, the catcher in the nine hole, starting things off here in the home half of the eighth. Pointer drops a curveball in for strike one. The Gators' bats have been silenced a little bit today, but the pitching and the defense have been superb. What's new? Right. It's been like that for about a month now. Abraham spoils that one. We'll do it again. No balls and two strikes. Bullpen starting pitching. Defense. They are getting it all sured up as they head in this final stretch here. Swing and a miss. Swung off the front foot and he can't connect. Second strike out for Pointer. It's a really good spot. Stayed on the edge, elevated it just enough to get the job done. Fourth time through the order, Stephen Kerr, one for three. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Boy, and that's what Pointer does. He's, he, you know, when, even when he misses, it's a small miss. And if, 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 and if the umpire gets in rhythm with him, I mean, it's just before you know it, you, everybody's 0-2, 1-2, and fighting for their life. You've mentioned that a couple of times. It's a great point. When you say the umpire getting rhythm with him, when that happens, you're going to get some of those borderline calls. Yes, absolutely. If you if you're a small miss guy, yeah, there you go. Yeah. I mean, it's you know you just you keep everybody's happy. Every you know I don't care who who you are. You want to see the game flow and you you want to see pitchers if they throw it to the glove, like that's that's uncharacteristic. That's a big miss. That's uh, you don't see that from Pointer very often.
The double deuce from the left-hander. Got him. Blew the fastball by him at 89. Basically the same sequence. I mean, he gets in that rhythm, and you're just repeating sequences to guys. Finishes them with the same pitch that he finished Abraham with. Just up enough that it looks like I can get there. It's just at the right spot, and it's it, you, you feel like you're, you, you you got a chance to really drive that ball. You just don't. Line shot up the middle. Endress ambushes one, and that'll bring their best hitter to the plate in Brendan Sanger. Second hit for Endress. You know, stays on it. Breaking ball. Sits. You know, he does a real, Endress does a real good job. He just sits. Sits right on that, uses his hands, and hammers it up the middle. And, you know, this isn't a bad situation for Florida. If you can get out of this inning, you get Endress and Sanger out of the way going to the ninth, which, and gives you options. You got more righties coming behind these two guys. And you got Lewis looming down there and a plethora of other guys that you could go to. Sanger doesn't have many bad at bats. He was up 3-0 in a similar spot as last time up. Wound up striking out. He would love to atone for that here. Inside corner for a strike, but it squirts away from Schwartz. And now the tying run in scoring position. Yeah, that's a that's a big mistake right there. He just uh, JJ has had a great regional, but he just clanked that one. I don't think it was a cross up. I just think he missed it. Might have got caught trying to peek at Endress because he is a good runner. And he just missed it. Pass ball all the way. Conference USA Player of the Year. A chance to drive in the tying run. 1-1 one, one, tapped foul. You know, you, here's the one thing about Florida, you gotta be careful. You know, you play at this field all year and you're always home team. When you're in this high game, you, you kind of lose grass. You're out there, you're playing. You're not thinking about it. All of a sudden, boom, if something happens here, you only got one more shot left. Right. Nice block by Schwartz on that one. These are the kind of battles you love in postseason play. Great relief pitcher on the mound. One of the best hitters in college baseball at the plate. And a tying run off the bag at second. Endress runs well, so if you can hit it to the outfield, good chance that he'll score. Two two off the plate outside to give you an idea of how good and consistent Sanger is. Only twice all season long did he not reach base. <laughs> I mean, we're in the 61st game of the year for FAU. Did you think it wasn't going to full count? Yeah, right. You knew it. <laughs> Big payoff pitch. Got him. Sanger can't believe it. Pointer gets the job done. Have, have no fear, Gator fans. Bobby Pointer is here. Well, we haven't seen or talked about those men in blue all weekend long, and no offense to them personally, that's a good thing. That's the grounds crew. They have just gotten the call on the walkie-talkies that there is lightning in the area. So even though we have not seen a drop of rain all weekend, we're going to have to be delayed a little bit because when there's lightning, you automatically have to halt play for estimated time would be 30 minutes here. We don't see anything in our view, but again, that doesn't matter. On radar, it's close enough. It already has delayed action in Tallahassee, so apparently some of that has gone south and hit us here in Gainesville. So with FAU trailing Florida two to one, we have to stop play 
If there's lightning within an eight mile radius, that's the rule, a 30 minute delay. So here we are. And in between innings while we were away, the crew came out and they just announced it on the PA, a lightning delay for 30 minutes. So the fans leaving their seats, the players heading towards the dugout. And for the time, we will keep it here. If you're just joining us, it's been maybe the best played game overall of this regional. Very clean. And if you like great defense, Florida is the team to watch. Just sit back and watch. These are not routine plays. I know they make it look like it, but the ease that they make them, but they are not. They are tough plays, balls that are hit hard or soft where the infielders have got to move. Use good feet and accurate throwing arms. That's just today. We didn't even include the Buddy Reed catch, which was top five Sports Center top ten plays. A couple others last night. The, the Bader win. catch. The Bader catch. And the throw. The Bader throw. Yes. Yeah, they were putting on a clinic last night against USF. And now we see the tarp going on of the field. We almost made this entire regional without a single weather delay. That would have been historic for me, Coach. I don't know Was about it you. you or I? Who jinxed it? I think you did. Probably. Yeah, you've already got, you know, your chef cooking up the lobster <laughs> bisque, your masseuse getting ready to rub you down after a hard weekend of calling games. Oh, I can't believe they got to put the tarp on. <laughs> oh, the grounds crew has made a cameo with Hope just one inning left. Yeah, hopefully it, this isn't what has in been in Tallahassee for the last five hours. We see the clouds to our right for the most part. Still a lot of blue in the sky. The temperature has been dipping for about the last three innings. It's gotten breezy for the first time today. Well, the action halted for 30 minutes. The scoring summary there hasn't been a lot of scoring. It all started though in the bottom of the first. Billy Endress led off with a triple and then Ricky Santiago drove him in. That made it one to nothing. The Gators would respond in the fourth inning. And then later on in the sixth inning, an RBI double by J.J. Schwartz. And that would make it two to one. And that's been our score since the middle of the sixth inning. So while we wait for the lightning delay, to end, we will send you to Trophy Lives and come back here to the live action in Gainesville.